we don't need the expensive computer to access the internet. Now we can access it through mobile phone. Like in Thailand, at one point we thought that we would not have free access to the internet. Now mobile phone uh, is almost free. Uh, in the United States, they give you mobile phone if you use it for one year. If you don't use it, you have to pay. If you use it, you don't have to pay. And like in Thailand now, we have more SIM card, about double the number of the population. And that probably will appear in every country, every, uh, Africa or uh, other place, because uh, companies like Google want to advertise. They get a lot of money from advertising. And, and they are now changing from advertising to the internet to advertising through the mobile phone. So I think not very long from now, you will see mobile phones available to everybody in the whole world. One more question before we wrap up. Uh, you know, we've talked about the internet, but we've also talked about things like the mobile phone. Uh, there are other developments that are that are developing. There's Twitter. There are online meeting technologies, social networks that piece by piece uses. There's radio, there's cell phone. Uh, there, there there are blogs. Uh, is, is there any one particular tool that we should be using that is like right on the cutting edge or should we be using an approach that leverages several or different ones of these technologies to be able to promote more understanding, more cultural uh, uh, knowledge, more connections between people? What's your thought on that? The internet is evolving in an unexpected way. You don't know what will happen next year. Uh, like Twitter, uh, earlier we have to pay to send short messages. Now Twitter is free. All the chat message company will go down the drain. All the telephone company will go out of internet because the internet uh, is now providing all of those services. All right, final question. I was very intrigued with the notion of dot, 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 slash, the sort of a rebranding of peace. Uh, dot, 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 dash. Yes. Uh, peace. And uh, because, you know, one of the issues that at least those of us in the Alliance for Peace Building face is the whole issue of, you know, how interested are people today in the concept of peace? Is it a bygone notion? Is it not, you know, exciting enough uh, um, to really capture coverage in the, the, the wider media, not just the people-created media? And so I'd like to hear from each of you, what do you think about this uh, notion that the We Are Family Foundation has had with their rebranding of peace as the dot, 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 slash. Is that a way for us to, to go forward in terms of renaming or rebranding uh, a, a, a peace? And uh, what, are, what are some ways that your organizations are thinking about doing that? Shall we start with you, Lena, and come down? Uh, I think it's a I think it's a challenge. Um, I think again I'll answer the question from my perspective. Um, from, from our perspective, um, we are really aiming at people to be able to engage around something that is even more um, in their daily lives um, than the notion of, of peace. Uh, we want them to have physical safety. We want them to have um, economic security. We want them to be able to have a voice um, around what their governance says. We want women to be safe from rape. And so our, our way of communicating various different messages and opening up dialogue in the countries that we work in is very much around use, mirroring a language that people use themselves. And it's not to say that peace um, is a taboo that we don't say, but for example, in the DRC, in the DR Congo, there was recently a peace program called Amani program, which means um, uh, peace in Swahili. It was a flop. It didn't work. The rebels are still there. There are more and more displaced people. And so sometimes the word can be associated with a faulty, uh, mismanaged political process. And thus, we don't necessarily need to cling to that notion of peace in the way it's being used by politicians, and we can bring it down. And our reality TV program is called Tosal which means let's do it. 
okay? We, and we do uh, programs that say, let's get together again, let's work together, let's build, let's, let's use action verbs and really get people realizing what they can do to make their lives better and more peaceful. Rebranding is not that important. I think uh, it is more important to provide education to the young kids from the beginning to be peaceful, uh, to have the positive way of thinking. Perhaps we can introduce this by games. Everybody like games. So let them play games and say that if they do uh, this kind of thing, they fight, they die, if they try to convince it, they try to share things, it would uh, have a better result. So we have to educate everybody to be happy, to be peaceful. I myself every morning, I look in the mirror and I say to the mirror that I'll be kind and considerate. I will do good things, I will be happy. And then I like what song, it said, Pretend to be happy when you are blue, then you will be happy as you pretend. So train yourself to be happy. I'm just going to comment on, and thank you for bringing 3.dash to the uh, forefront, but um, I, I think one of the things, uh, and I deal with primarily American um, audience at the moment, obviously we are working with teens from around the world, but one of the things I think that's important as we move forward in creating media that's then distributed is that you make something interesting, you make something that gets people's attention. Because if you don't do that, then you, have, you, you haven't done the job. You need to be able to tell the story well. Sometimes that means a normal documentary or a reality show. It shows what's happening. But sometimes it also means making it cool to an audience that you need to address. Making it something that people want. Make, making it something that's engaging. And sometimes what adults think are engaging is certainly not engaging to younger people. So I, I, while um, I agree with everything that everybody said up here, I think that we do have to keep that notion about who our audience is and how we address that audience given where we are as a society, as a world today. So rebranding in some way, 3.dash certainly hasn't taken over the world yet. <laughs> um, but the words, we are family, are universal and they they have sort of taken over the world but you know to some people they aren't cool and maybe to kids they're not cool but three dot dash it remains to be seen great thank you so much i want to thank all of you for uh bearing with us uh, during uh, this session i think we've learned a few things one that mutual understanding is absolutely critical to being able uh, to build peace it is as critical as some of the other um, um, uh, correlates of, of, of uh, violent conflict um, are to being able to reduce it that we need to make sure that all of our work on mutual understanding is grounded in the real life realities um, 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 of people and, and, and to really sort of lead you know, with that piece. That we need to be flexible in terms of ICTs and media because they're changing every day and in fact real people on the ground are deciding how they're going to use that media and what they're going to use it for. So this is a place to some extent where, where we may have to follow uh, instead um, of lead. And, and lastly, this is not the final word. We want you to talk about these questions and these issues and what you've heard um, throughout the day and throughout uh, the next three days of the conference so we can figure out how we can best work together and how we can leave here with actions and approaches that will allow us to more significantly leverage the power of peace. Thank you so very much. Let's thank